Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yasser Ahmed. So, in this video, we are going to be completing paper three from the CIE ICTI GCC course. We are doing the October November 2020 paper. And if you check out the previous video, I've completed a website section of this paper. So, we are now going to be doing data analysis, which is spreadsheets. So, remember, guys, paper paper three is a practical paper, which is two hours and thirty minutes long. Um, I've recently downloaded these files for um, this exam paper. I think initially when the files were shared by the exam board, there were some issues with the database CSV file for paper 2 and also some issues with um, the spreadsheet CSV file. However, these issues have now been resolved. So if you do download the more recent files, then there should be no issues with the formatting. Right, so task 3, data analysis you are going to perform some calculations using the income and expenditure of this company over a 12 month period. All currency values must be in dollars to two decimal places. So this is important, we'll come back to this. Open and examine the file n20yearend.csv in a suitable spreadsheet package. So if I find the file you'll notice uh, there's now no issues with the formatting. So Previously, when I downloaded these files, um, there was the formatting was all over the place, but you can see now it, this kind of looks more normal. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so now we need to place the text edited by, let me just copy this, followed by a space, your name, center number, and candidate number, then a space followed on, sorry, then a space followed by on followed by a space and then today's automate, automated date right aligned in the header. Okay, so it's a bit confusing reading that. So what we need to do is we need to go into the header. So if we go to insert, um, where's the header? If you can't see it, we can always search for it. So header and footer. And on the right hand side, we need to include edited by, followed by a space, then your name, centre number and candidate number, so let me include that first. For centre number I'll use 5, 6, 7, 8 and for the candidate number I will use 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay, so space, okay, comma and then 5, 6, 7, 8 for the centre number, 1, 2, 3, 4 for the candidate number. Okay, then a space followed by on. Okay, and then another space. And what we need next is today's automated date. Okay, so let me just go back to here. Uh, we can insert the current date. Okay, so make sure you have the space before and after the on. And if you click anywhere, you can go to view, normal. And then if you go to file and print, you can see uh, the details on the top. Okay, so edited by your name, sense number, candidate number, space and on and space and then today's date. Okay, I think I've done that right. So let's go back to the paper. Okay. Next thing we need to do is we need to save this as a spreadsheet with the file name. I'm just going to copy and paste this, or let's refer to the example. So the file name is going to be nh20year underscore candidate, or sorry, center number, and any candidate number. So I'm just going to edit this in a second. So guys, when you do save, make sure you save as an Excel workbook. Okay, let me type in. This name and the center number is going to be 5678. Candidate number will be 1234. So make sure you are including your details in the exam and save this into your source folder. Okay, so Excel workbook, save. And you can check up here the format file extension is here as well. So this has been saved not as a CSV, it's been saved as an Excel workbook. Done. Okay, question 15. We have to insert two new rows at the top of the spreadsheet 
and merge cells A1 to M1. Okay, so we, we need to insert two new rows and then we need to merge A1 to M1. In this merge cell, please place the text and then we're going to copy and paste this text into the first um, merged cell. Okay, so let's go to Excel. If you click on the top right on a one, you can insert a row by right clicking and clicking on, on insert. And then we can click insert again. So in the first row, it needs to be merged across to um, from A to M. And then you can go to home and click on merge and center. Okay. Uh, let's include this text. Obviously, if you guys are writing this text, typing it in, make sure you're not making spelling mistakes. Make sure you include capital letters when shown. Okay, so let me go to here. Let me paste in that text. Now we have to format the spreadsheet so it looks like this picture here. Okay, so um, just before we have a look at this picture, format the cell merged A1 to M1 to contain white 24 point text on a dark blue background. So obviously you can't see the blue background here, but in the first row, it has to be white text on a dark blue background. So change the text color and then choose like a dark blue background. Okay, done. Let's see what this says. Format only the merge cells in row 3 to contain black text. Okay, so it's going to be this row here. 18 points high and a light grey background. So we'll come back to this point in a second. So we've done this now. Um, let me just highlight this is done. Let's fix the first row. So you can see the first row is probably the double the size of a normal row. Okay, so we can fix that. So let's make it about double the size. And what I'm going to do now is increase the size of this font as well. Okay. Nothing specific, but obviously we can see the font is slightly bigger here. Okay. And also this looks like it's, it's bold as well. So let me just make the font um, bold as well. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. Second row looks normal size, so we're going to leave this. The third row, you can see the size of the row is slightly bigger. So let's increase the size of that row slightly. Okay, income is going to be merged across B to E. So you can highlight these cells. So B to E, merge and center. Uh, expenditure is going to be from G to J. Okay, and then profit and loss from L to M. Okay, so row three to contain black text 18 points high and have a light gray background. So what we need to do is we need to change the background to like a light gray. And what size is the text 18 points so whoops and you can see the text is center aligned and also center aligned vertically as well so horizontal alignment is center and the vertical alignment is center as well so the text appears in the middle of the cell so what we can do is we can click on this alignment here. So center aligned in the middle of the cell, also vertically going up and down. Okay, so that's that done. Okay, row F and K, we need to re decrease the size of the columns. So let's just make it maybe two points or two pixels. There we go. Right, it's looking good now and doesn't seem to be any border settings applied so we can leave that. Right, let's see what else we need to do. Um, 
we're not quite finished yet I'm just going to highlight this to say I'm done now you can see the months here are right aligned and these look like they're also be made into bold so what we can do is just first of all increase the size of the column slightly make it bold and make it right aligned okay done and then these headings look like they've also become bold I'm just going to increase the size slightly that's maybe too big Oops. okay there we go so these headings I'm just going to make them all bold okay I'm just looking at the formatting it looks like it's the more to the right if I'm being honest um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so yeah that's fine um, wall garden slightly bigger so maybe me maybe my eyes are deceiving me but it just look like it's, it's more to the right okay and even materials here you can see it's more to the right okay so let me just change the sizes um, materials that's quite obvious there's more to the right alignment premises let me double check and then total okay in profit and loss you can see these two are center aligned and this is more to a left alignment so let me just change that to the left and then there we go I think that looks spot on to me um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply the formatting um, actually what I'll do I'll leave that for later so dollars in two decimal places I think I might apply that later so I think I'm happy with that question there was a total of 13 marks so you saw myself I was taking my time in answering these questions so make sure you are double checking and there's no need to rush in the exam you have plenty of time to get this done and to get it done right okay so now what we're going to be doing is actually I might as well put the formatting in now for the dollars okay so um, it's going to be this, this, this row here, this, this, and this row, and then these two rows as well. So it's pretty much most of it. So let me apply dollars. And what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to do it slightly differently I don't want to see these dashes so if I go to right click format cells um, I click on currency dollars yeah I'd rather see that instead so let me do that again right click format cells currency select dollars Two decimal places is fine. Um, I have to just increase the size there. Okay. And let's put the dollars in here as well. Format cells, currency. US dollars. Done. Right guys, now what we need to do is we need to for question 16 use a function. 
to calculate the total income from January. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a sum. Okay, and we basically want to add up from this cell here to this cell here. Okay, so if I go back to my Excel, equals sum, and we want to add up the plant sales, the landscaping, and the walled garden. So how much did we make in January? This is your total. And obviously you can increase the size. Okay, to review what we've been making. Okay. Um, guys, what I'm going to do actually, I, I think I might just leave these to the left side. Um, so I'm not convinced if these have to be ch changed. It wasn't clear um, in the mark scheme or not. So I'm just going to leave it to the left side, these headings. Right, that's done now. Okay. So, okay, that's the income. In cell J5, use the function to calculate the total expenditure for January. So J5 is going to be this cell here. And we have to use another function to calculate the total expenditure. So how much have we cost? Or sorry, how much have we spent? So again, it's going to be an equal sum. You can highlight from here to here. So from uh, G to I, press enter and then increase the column so you can see the full total. Okay, so that's done. And the mistake you could make is you're using um, a formula. So you're basically writing equal this cell plus this cell plus that cell and that's not uh, making use of a function. Okay, in cell L5, you need to calculate the profit for January. So the profit is going to be income minus the expenditure. So in which cell again? L5, which is this cell here. It's going to be income, so this cell here, minus the expenditure. Okay. And if I press enter, oops, you can see the value. So obviously, um, in this month here, we've made more money than what we spent. So this is the difference between the profit and the loss. Okay, so this is the difference. Right. So obviously, this is your profit right now. Okay. Right. In Cell M5, display the text profit if the profit for this month is greater than or equal to zero. If the profit is less than zero, display the text loss. Okay, so what we need to do, let me go to my Excel. So in M5, so this is M5. If the, um, okay, display the text profit. So this is going to be an if statement because we have two outcomes, either profit or loss. So what's the condition? So if the profit for this month, so what we need to do is we need to focus on this figure here. If this is greater than or equal to zero, so this is like a condition, let me just change the color. Okay, so if this is greater than or equal to zero, then we're going to display profit. Okay, so let me just change this to green as well. And then this is going to be a default statement. Or you can do it the other, other way around. So there's two ways of doing this. I'll show you both ways actually. Um, okay, so both ways will work. So equal if logical test. So we're checking this figure here. If this is greater than or equal to zero yeah that's what we've done then what we want to display I'm going to write it up here if it's true we want to display the word profit so you need to write your speech marks and some of the speech marks and if it's not true so we've got a logical test here we've got a true statement and if it's not true, then we want to show a false um, value, which is going to be loss. Close your brackets, enter. 
So obviously here we have profit because this number here is greater than this number here. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to purposely change this value here to zero. Which now means we're negative. Okay, so if you're not making any money here, then this value here is greater than this value, and obviously this is now showing loss as an indicator. I'm just going to undo my changes. Okay, you could have also done the if statement slightly differently. I'm going to show you the other way of doing this if statement. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, so what if L5 is Okay, so we could do L5 is less than zero, and if L5 is less than zero, then what we could have as a true statement is loss. So if this number here is less than zero, you could have loss, but if it's not true, if it's false, then you can have um, profit. Okay, so it's up to you guys how you go about doing the if statements as long as you get to the right answer. Okay, um, why have I not changed that back to? what it was. I'm just going to copy and paste my if statement first of all. Oh, actually what I'll do is, um, let me just go back a few steps. Okay, we'll stick to this if statement. It's, it's basically the same as what I've just shown you. Right, done. Okay, that's done now. Now format this cell to have a black text on a red background if the cell displays the text loss. Okay, let me change the color of this back to yellow. Okay, so what we have to do is use conditional formatting. So let's go back to the Excel sheet. Um, actually, before we try the condition, yeah, let me change this number here. Um, I'm just thinking. What am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to delete this formula here for now because I want to show the loss. And we can always put that formula back in. Okay. So if this indicator is equal to loss, then it's going to have black text on a red background. Okay. So what we do is we use conditional formatting. So highlight cell rules. If it's equal to loss, Okay, then if you click on here, custom format, uh, the fill is going to be red, so that's going to be the background. Okay, and if you go to the font, the font is going to be black. Okay, and you can see that's worked. Okay, if I put this formula back in again, the conditional formatting should come off because this is now profit. Okay, so you can take out this formula function here to see if this was working or not. Okay, so that's working. Format this cell to have a white text on a black background if this cell displays profit. So again, we're going to do another conditional formatting, highlight cell rules. If the text contains profit, okay, we're going to have a black background. So again, we have to customize this. So black background and the font is going to be white. And you can see, perfect, that's working. Okay, so that's done. Okay, for evidence five, we need to place into your evidence document a screenshot that shows you apply the formatting to cell M5. So let me just copy and paste this into the evidence document first. Okay, so this is the evidence document I've used for the website task. So you can see uh, we've got the HTML, if we go up, uh, the browser sh screenshot, CSS, and the folder structure, or the folder, and files. So in the same evidence document, now what we need to do is to take some evidence 
that you have applied this formatting to cell M5. So what we can do is we can go to conditional formatting, manage rules, and we can take a print screen of this. So if the cell value contains profit, then this will be the format. If it contains loss, then this will be the format. Um, okay, so let me just take a screenshot of this. And you can see clearly it's been applied to M5. Okay, save the changes. Done. Okay, done. Okay, now what we need to do is replicate the formula and formatting entered in steps 16 to 19 for all months. So basically from steps 16 to 19, we need to re replicate the formula. So all that means is we're basically dragging down the formula. So if you go to the bottom corner, you can see the cursor changes into a black cross, then you can drag down. Or you can just double click on the little black cross. Okay, that's not working. Let's drag it down. Okay. And um, we've got three losses there in total. Done. Format all currency value values to two dos so let me say that again. Format all currency values to two two dollars with two decimal places. Okay, yep, so I think I did that before, but we can double check. Two dollars, two decimal places. Perfect. Save your spreadsheet and then now we're going to print our formulas off. So let me just save my spreadsheet. Let me put my formulas on. Okay, just make sure you adjust the columns accordingly. So I'm just double clicking in between the letters. Uh, you want to make sure all of your formulas are shown in full. Okay, so we can see all of the formulas in full. We're going to be printing in a landscape orientation. Row and column headings are going to be displayed. So when you go to file and print, change to landscape. Um, let me have a quick look. The contents of all cells are fully visible and can be easily read. Um, let's see what happens if we fit it to one page. Yep, that's fine. I think it's yeah. Normally, when you're working with formulas, you can print it across two pages. But since all of these formulas are clear on one page, then we can go ahead and print um, this page off. Okay, so make sure your header details are shown. Actually, before we print, I forgot. Uh, we need to also show the row and column headings. So if you go to fetch sheet on or the scaling options, custom scaling options, sheet, um, and then if you select row and column headings, then you should see the letters and numbers. Okay, you can go ahead and print this off. Obviously, if you printed and you spot a mistake, maybe the formula is not shown in full, then you can go ahead and print this off again. Okay, so that's that done. Okay. Okay, your next printout is going to be showing the formulas. So, sorry, not the formulas, um, the values now. Okay. So remember, most of your marks is going to come from this um, printout, but now we need to show off um, the values. So take off the formulas. Uh, just make sure it's all fitting again. All the data is shown, sh should I say. So I'm just double clicking. Okay, there we go. Just make this a little bit bigger. Okay. So for the values, it's going to fit on a single page. Row and column headings are not displayed. The contents of the cells are fully visible. So we can stick with um, the landscape. So print, but let's take off the row and column headings. So custom scaling options, sheet, take this off. Make sure all of the data is shown. Fits to a single page, yeah, fits sheet on one page. Center number, candidate number, yeah, that's all there. Um, yeah, we can go ahead and we can print this off. 
done. And again, always check your printouts for any mistakes. And finally, the last piece or last part of this paper is to print off the evidence document. So what we have here is one piece of evidence from the spreadsheet part and four pieces from uh, the website part. So always go into print preview. You can see the folder and the files, the CSS, the browser screenshot, the HTML, which has been copied and pasted. Uh, it doesn't matter if that HTML goes across many pages. And then the evidence from this um, spreadsheet task. Okay, guys, we have come to the end of this video. Hopefully this video was useful to you. Um, please drop your comments below and good luck to you guys if you still have exams this year. Take care. All the best. Thank you again for your time. Bye-bye.